it's amazing how technology is both beautiful and a pain in the ass. Hi, this is my second attempt, which hopefully will be the final attempt at this video. Uh, it froze on me halfway, well not even halfway, a few minutes in. So I want to do several things in this video, so this is kind of a salad. I like to think of it as a little salad video. And I want to talk a little bit about 2018. I want to talk a little bit about 2019. I want to share a beautiful gift that someone sent me and thank them for it publicly. And I want to do a, a VR to Oya's Girl. Queen Aset has been doing this great series that I'll talk about in a minute, probably several minutes knowing me. Uh, and so I want to do one of the spreads from that series with you today, because I love the series she's doing. And she's one of my favorite YouTubers right now. If you don't follow her channel, Oya's Girl, O-Y-A-S-G-I-R-L, I would pause this and go there now. And um, she's one of my favorites, uh, because her videos are so soothing. I mean, her her, like... Her presence is so soothing and quiet, and the sounds that her jewelry makes when she moves is like ASMR, tingly, love it. But beyond just having a really soothing presence, the things that she's talking about and the things she's saying and giving voice to are, are gifts to anyone who wants to listen to them. And I'll try to remember to put a link to this, but if you have not watched her walkthrough, I think it's of the Angels and Ancestors Oracle deck, which I don't have. Uh, I think that's the time. I'll try to put a link to it. I would, even if you're not interested in that deck, I would go listen to the first half of that video um, for some really important lessons that I think are key. So I want to do all of those things, and um, let's just dive in. So 2018, not my favorite year by any stretch, but let's start with some good stuff. 2018 was like a really strange year like some really good stuff happened and it was just um you know a lot of folks are talking about taking a depth year in 2019 i feel like 2018 for me was a depth year without choosing it to be one um and uh it you know i mean it wasn't you know we're still here you know we get through but i i, I we were joking yesterday that we could use a shallow year uh and I, I definitely could, or at least just sort of a, a respite. But anyway, uh, we'll talk about stuff like that. So anyway, um, I managed to get... So one of my favorite decks, as you know, from if you watch my channel from 2018, was the Japa Rizzataro, which just went out of print. And a really generous friend offered to sell me a copy that they had that they weren't working with uh, for, you know, no really no more than it cost to get it when it was in print. Because I wanted, I really, I love that deck so much. It just talks uh, in, a, in a great way. It's probably my primary reading deck for its, um, uh, just the, the the ease of the dialogue that I have with it, whether I'm reading for myself or for others. And it was also part of the Reader Studio experience, which was really special in Benabel Wen's presentation in that um, in that conference which was really special so um so i managed to get a backup copy of it and with that um the person who sold it to me sent me a beautiful gift uh which is an il minigello deck that i have had my eye on for for quite a long time and just never pulled the trigger on it's the ferdinando Crippa itaroki 1978 and uh it's it's really charming and i'm so happy to have it and uh, it was such a surprise and like most Il Menegello decks, I always such a, have such a hard time saying Il Menegello. It, it has really like yummy cardstock, this beautiful art paper. And it's a really simple deck. And um, I love the, there's the sort of like the art style in it. The line drawings are very kind of like, there's, there's just this little side eye that I love, that I love in the characters. Uh, but then the pips are literally just a number and a suit symbol. Um, and so there's just this beautiful simplicity of it. And, you know, sometimes we want really rich, busy decks, and sometimes we want something really simple. And so this is one of those. So I thank that person. I don't like to say who gave me what and whatnot, but um, it was really generous, and uh, I'm really delighted by it. And thank you. You know, the community can be so generous, which is amazing. 
So I want to be generous, and I want to make a couple of recommendations, and I know that I'm going to get heat for this. Um, but I did mention that 2018 was a weird year in a lot of ways. 2018 was a great year. I finished my master's degree, my MFA, graduated. Um, I, you know, I had, uh, you know, for my writing life, some some successes that were really substantial. One of my pieces was chosen for um, a list of uh, uh, of plays that feature intersectional and diverse characters and uh, by a really well-known theater company. So that was a good thing. I won some award. Like, it's just, like, in that way, it was a great year. It was a hard year to watch the world um, for a lot of us. And um, it, was a, it was a hard year because I, I recognized that I had a lot of work to do in order to understand the way that the world works. Um, and, uh, you know, I'm going to get into some stuff right now that's going to piss people off. And I'm just going to ask you that, that you stay with me and listen and, and just allow yourself to receive what I'm saying and the hopes that there's something in there. Um, you know, I've always fancied myself to be a very caring, um, empathetic person. And uh, in the past few years, I've realized that I may be those things, but I'm also really naive or had been really naive and have been really naive because of the privilege that um, I was born into, you know, and that word is very triggering for a lot of folks. Um, so let me take a moment and explain what it means. Again, I would like you to stay with me on this and and, uh, and just listen and receive it. You know, I'm not going to argue with anyone about it. I've Part of 2018 has been really investing in learning these lessons. So you're not going to convince me differently. You may, you know, add nuance. But if you want to fight with me about this, you're not going to. So I'm going to just ignore you and uh, you're going to have resisted me. Um, privilege is, you know, it's, it's a tricky word, right? One of the things that I was chatting with about another friend this week is that we don't yet have the language to talk about a lot of the stuff that has become uh, prevalent in the world. You know, our, our, our realizations about each other and about otherness, what we used to consider as other, but what turns out to just be everyone around us. It's so hard to talk about this stuff. I really should have made notes. Um, whether it's a, um, it's a trans person, an LGBT person, um, a person of color, people of color, white people, straight white people, white men, um, don't experience the same struggles that other groups do. And even if you're well-intentioned and well-meaning and you think that you're um, an ally or you think you're empathetic, you don't realize how much you benefit from that unearned advantage. So privilege is really unearned advantage. Meaning, and, and a lot of people say that and say, well, I'm not rich, I'm not famous, I don't have all these things that I want, my life has been tough. It's not the same thing as what we view as, as like a privileged life where you're rolling in money. It's that you don't face the same obstacles other people do. And I've always sort of known that I was lucky in some ways and not lucky in other ways. Uh, but 2018 for me has been really about making an investment in understanding my privilege um, and how to, how to use that position of privilege to uh, affect whatever change I can through my limited microphone. And I could spend hours talking about this stuff, but um, what I want to do is just sort of open up the door for folks who are interested in learning more um, and talk about two things that I can recommend that were written by people who are far um, more educated on this than I am. I'm really sort of at the beginning of my journey. So I have two books I want to recommend for folks that I've read. These are on my iPad because I'm running out of space for books. So the first one is called White Fragility by Robin DiAngelo. And it's obviously got a really triggering title for people, but I think the more triggered you are by this title, the more you're going to benefit from reading this book. It's, um, it's not a difficult read in the sense of its weight. It's an, it's a short book. Um, it's not an easy read because it invites you to understand privilege um, and to go beyond that and really dig into why it's so hard for us as white people um, to, to learn the lessons of privilege and how not only do we benefit from those things, but we shut down 
people of color, for example, when they try to engage with us on it. So this book by Robin D'Angelo uh, is the first one that I would recommend. Robin D'Angelo is a white woman. She's a white cis woman. and um, But she's an educator uh, who works in or who has worked in diversity training for corporate America. And I think it's it's a good gateway for a lot of folks in the sense that um, she's used to she's used to working with resistant white Americans. Um, and so I would recommend that. And then after you read that, what I would recommend is um, So You Want to Talk About Race by Ijeoma Aluo, who is another writer I admire a lot. And she's a woman of color uh, with a white mother. And so her perspective, again, both of these books are really written to a white audience to help understand the world that we're living in and the impact of, of um, a white-centered narrative and the institutional racism of the United States uh, that exists. And so both of these books are really thoughtfully written. Both of them are really generous. And a lot of times, you know, white people, white progressives like me will say, well, how, what do I do? How do I become a better white person? You know, and the pressure then lands on people of color to explain to us that's not their job. But happily, folks like Ijeoma Aluo and others, there's actually another one I just started reading, which I'll recommend too. It's called Backlash by George Yancey. Let me get over to the cover so you can see it. Um, you guys forget how to do this. Uh, cover. Here we go. Um, so this is Backlash by George Yancey. Uh, what happens when we talk honestly about racism in America? This one is a really personal account. Um, George Yancey wrote a really uh, thoughtful piece in the an op-ed in the New York Times. Um, and uh, it was meant to be a gift to white America to explore the impact that we have on people of color. And it created a huge backlash and he was shocked by the death threats. So this one I just started reading. Um, I would actually read them probably in the order that I just shared them with you, um, which is just pure coincidence, but I think that it's a good way to go. So uh, the reason that this is important is because um, I try to be really thoughtful about doing this because I don't want to like piss people off so they don't hear my message, but I want to like get the message out there. Um, when pe when we talk about one of the, so let me get to, so let's go to Robin D'Angelo's book. When we talk about racism, white people start to get defensive because when we hear racist, we hear someone telling us we're a bad person, and we say, "Well, I don't do that. I'm not that." Well, all what what the book teaches us. And why it's so valuable is that it helps us understand the structure of racism. Racism isn't a person necessarily. It's a system of legislation and norms that allow for um, discrimination, that allow for harm to come to groups. Um, and uh, when we, as white people, deny the existence of that, that's one way that we contribute into it. When we get defensive, um, about being called out for having done or said something problematic. That's how we contribute to it. So it, it it's really an exploration of the system and how we fit into the system rather than the idea of an individual person being a racist. Um, all white people in this country benefit from privilege. All straight people benefit from privilege. All men benefit from privilege. There's different kinds of privilege, and reading these books helps you understand why. 2018 was a lot for me about understanding that. So I, you know, I've, I've talked a lot about this. I know that this is going to be a big turnoff to a lot of folks. The more it's a turnoff to you, the more I would encourage you to at least read the first one of the bunch, um, and to to be open to it. It's not about being a bad person. You know, we all are complex. Nothing is all one thing. But we all contribute in ways to the state of the world and there are things we can do if we resist the temptation to get defensive. And um, so these are three books that are available to us that have been um, written by people who I've thought about a lot of this. Two of them are by people of color who have experienced this world for, and, and, so it, and have generously said, I'm going to invest my energy 
in in teaching in these lessons. And so to me, we have a responsibility to engage those lessons and to be open to them. And so I'll uh, again, I'll try to link those three books there um, in the in the uh, in the description below. I always forget to do it, but uh, if in case I forget, it's White Fragility by Robin D'Angelo. So you want to talk about race by Gioma Aluo and Bla Backlash by Oops, uh, Gary, I forgot his name already. Um, George Yancey. So that was 2018. I mean, and in a weird way, that sort of sums up a lot of 2018 was just one of the reasons why 2018 was so difficult is um, you don't... Uh, I think an example of privilege is that you you wake up to how shitty the world can be to people and you can't go back to sleep, and and um, you sort of want to, you know. I mean, ignorance is bliss. That's another example of privilege, right? It's like I don't have to think about this stuff as if I don't want to, but I do have to think about it if I want to be a better person and I want to contribute to the community. Um, so there's just it's a lot. There's a lot to unpack. Um, I know that uh, it's uncomfortable for people to talk about this. It's uncomfortable for me to talk about it. Um, you know, I worry, oh, I'll lose subscribers. I worry that I'll get nasty comments. But that's, I mean, the con those consequences are so fucking small compared to the things people have to deal with that you can just see when you turn on the news. So who the fuck am I to not talk about this stuff when the consequences for me are so far lower than to be someone who's standing in a hotel lobby and have the the security guard call the police on them because they don't believe they're a guest. You know, I mean, that kind of bullshit is fucked up. And so the consequences for me are that someone might get pissed off at me. Like, okay, I think I can handle that. I think in my life I can manage that shit. Um, and so, it, like, you know, in a lot of ways, 2018 wasn't a bad year in a personal way. It was a bad year in a sense of, like, I have been... And it, it's not just 2018. To be honest, this has been a journey I started... I noticed, you know, as a naive and privileged person, and I use these terms, they're not pejorative, right? Like, we can't help that we were born with privilege. We can't help that we didn't know this stuff. But we can help that we're not engaging it, you know? We can help that we remain ignorant of it. Um, I started noticing that the, you know, I went to a Catholic school and we learned about the history of the United States and we learned that racism was over. I mean, you just sort of learn that. It's it's not it's not something you get formally told. You just you just learn it. You internalize it if you're a white person. Um, and it was actually shortly after Barack Obama was elected president that I started to realize like that was naive. Um, oh shit! Like that's that's not over. And um, it's embarrassing to say that. You know, it's embarrassing to talk about that stuff. To to admit my naivete, to ad admit my ignorance, to admit my privilege, but. Um, it, it was there, you know, and so it's been an ongoing journey, but this year in particular, I think 2017 and 2018 have been a huge, um, uh, avalanche of, of having the blinders ripped off for a lot of folks. And, um, the response to that for me is to learn what I can to take advantage of you know, the people who are generous enough to share their experiences and then to try to amplify that. It's not enough, but it's like, it's the start. Um, so, so, yeah, so yeah, um, the world is complex and we're not all one thing, you know, and I think that that's important to remember. And, you know, if, if you have a background like mine, it doesn't mean you're a bad person because you benefit from privilege it just but i think that we are failing as a community of people particularly a community of people with privilege when we stay silent about it and that's it so that's if you if you want to start engaging on this then i would begin with those three books that i recommended um it feels so strange now to segue to like 2019 goals. I mean, my 2019 goals is one of them is to keep 
investing in 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 learning in this and to um, understand the world better and to to continue to understand my place in it. Um, and I think there's also sort of a a, a twenty nineteen eye towards a spiritual path that I've sort of stepped away from uh, over the last couple of years. It's interesting that I, um, you know, I spent a lot of 2016 and 2017 working on what became Tarot on Earth. And that so much of that book was about, or all of that book was about doing readings that are purely practical, that are banal, um, and that are, are useful in a way that I felt lacking. Now, having gotten good at that, I feel like 2019 is going to be a turn toward um, a slightly more spiritual path, not even necessarily with the cards, but just in general, just understanding um, a cosmology of the world and uh, the, the ways that I make sense of the chaos, so to speak. So one of the things that I did for the first time ever... Um, was I ordered Benabel Wen's, um, this is the uh, Metaphysician's Planner, Daily Planner, uh, and I got it printed at Staples purely due to impatience. I really, uh, if you do buy this from her website, um, she'll send you the PDF and you can have it printed through Lulu, which I would recommend doing. Um, this, like the, to get a color cover, I sort of sacrificed, this is literally paper, it's not like cardstock. And then the pages they used are actually more like cardstock. So, but anyway, um, it's a great little, not even little, um, it's customizable. You need to have your uh, day and time of birth and location so that she can do your, um, your charts, your birth chart, and your solar return chart, which I didn't need. I actually have um, time passages to do that, but I she uses whole signs, which I hadn't learned about before. I'm actually working through her. Astro I'm pointing to it on the floor, like you can see it. Her astrology course. So I'll probably work through that, and I'll probably work through her book of maps. And so that's the thing for 2019 that I want to do. In 2019, I also want to finish my new book. My new book is very different from Tarot on Earth. Um, uh, it's a collection of essays on tarot, so it's not a workbook. Um, it's I always wanted a blog, and uh, I started making YouTube videos because it just felt like people were more interested in watching things than reading things. So this is kind of like the blog I would have written if I had a blog. And so I've got um, I I went out to this channel if you watched that video, and I went out to For Love of Cards on Facebook, and I said. Tell me, tell me what's interesting. Tell me what you want me to write about. And there were some things that I just didn't have enough experience to write about. For example, astrology, which is one of the things that prompted uh, my exploration of that, and some other um, some other topics. Diversity in decks comes up, and um, Shonda Rhimes, uh, the producer and the great you know maker of television. Uh, has doesn't like the word diversity. She likes the word normalizing, which I think is a great way to think about, uh, th you know, things because it's not. It's like the diversity is there in the world already. It's just not being reflected in art. It's not being reflected on television. It's not being reflected on corporate boards and and you know uh, producers of movies and casts of television you know the the diversity exists already the representation and the inclusion doesn't and so the normalizing of the the diverse community that we're part of no matter what part of the world we're working in uh is so that to me is like a really great way to think about it um so that comes up in the book. I talk about reading, doing third party reading. Some of the stuff I cover uh, in Tarot on Earth, and I'm just exploring more here. I talk about exoteric versus esoteric readings. I talk about what happens when you want to take a break. Suddenly my eyes are really itchy. I talk about you know when you get stuck, when you know you're right, when you know you're wrong. All you know. So I have essay, a bunch of essays on stuff like that. Um, I have an essay on my problem with the power of positive thinking, which I think. Um, I, I probably will warrant another video after what I've talked about. I don't want to get like too deep into that. Um, so 2019, I want to finish my book. Um, I am registered for the reader studio again. So barring any, you know, financial or, uh, or, um, you know, other obstacles, I'll, I'll be there and I'm really looking forward to that. And, um, and obviously writing and getting back to, you know, now that I finished my, uh, my master's degree, uh, I have, you know, some, some plans and some irons in the fire I'm hoping will, uh,
pan out and, and uh, also to sort of use my work as a writer to talk about the kinds of things I talked about in the first half of this video. How do I, how do I explore those things without um, appropriating other people's pain and other people's struggles? So uh, it's an interesting thing to work toward. All right, is that everything I wanted to talk about? Um, so let's get to uh, Os Queen Osset's spread. Um, so if you do not follow her on f Instagram or YouTube, I would recommend doing that pronto. Um, I will, again, try to link, but I did earlier mention the, the channel. I took a screenshot of the of the spread. All right, so she has invited us as a community to participate in her um, celebration of Kwanzaa. And she and Veronica Rose came up with a suite of spreads that I have been in love with and living for uh, each of the five days so far. This is the fifth one. I did the second one, I think, on Instagram. It's such a busy time of year, I haven't had time to sit and do them all, but I love them. They're great spreads, and uh, her videos are uh, on, on each spread is are really exceptionally um, interesting and, uh, and vulnerable. I mean, the experience she's having going through these spreads um, as, a, as our host is is really uh it's been emotional if you watch her videos for her and that vulnerability i think is is something that is another reason why i'm such a fan so i've got the spread here on my ipad again um so it's seven positions and so this is day five and so the the theme for the day is nia which is purpose and i would encourage you again to watch her videos to learn all about sort of what she's doing and kind of the invitation she's she's provided us um uh to uh to participate with her um but i wanted to i wanted to do this in part just to to like draw some attention over to the chat i'm like eh. um so so the seven positions are the first one is my personal purpose uh, the second is my next step in actioning my personal purpose. Three is my ancestral purpose. Four is how I can honor and respect my ancestral purpose. Five, my collective purpose. Uh, six, how, uh, I'm sorry, my next step in actioning my collective purpose. And seven, how I can best build and develop my community. And I figured that's a great spread to do here on the video. And uh, for the purposes of that, because this has a lot of ancestor energy, and I'm going to use the Ancestral Path Tarot, which is a deck that um, is out of print, but I th I keep hearing, I thought I heard was going to be revised and, and um, uh, returned, uh, returned to print. I'm not sure. Um, but it's an interesting deck because um, it uh, reflects four formative uh, cultures and world history so um there's native american there's european uh there's egyptian uh specifically with i think a, an extended focus on africa generally and then there's um japan and china which are not obviously the same but so there's a focus on four of the formative communities the four formative cultures and world history. So I'm going to draw and talk about them and, and use this deck for that. Um, so let's let's give it a go. I'm going to start with the first one, obviously. Now, if you watch her videos, she suggests pulling out a card that represents your ancestors. And I looked through a couple decks. I couldn't find something. So I took her other suggestion and I just sort of, um, you know, made space for it. So the first position is my personal purpose. personal purpose so we've got the king of swords interesting um 
That is really interesting. Uh, I, I always sort of fancy myself the Knight of Swords, although I'm getting a little old for the Knight of Swords. I think that that makes sense to a degree. I think the Knight, King of Swords has been through some stuff, and uh, I think the King of Swords talks about it, and I think the King of Swords talks about stuff that's not easy to talk about. Um, there's like an intellectual quality of the, Knight of, the King of Swords, which certainly reflects me uh, in a lot of ways. And so you know, the, the purpose, my personal purpose, at least at this moment, is to uh, embody that King of Swords energy, to talk about the stuff that's hard to talk about, and to engage the things that we don't always want to hear about, and to kind of cut through the bullshit, which I think the King and the Queen of Swords really do. Um, and, and, and I think the King of Swords trusts in the idea of learning, and lessons, you know, I think that's an important thing too. The swords, to me, are not just about thoughts and communication; they're also about learning. Because if you think about the mind, those lessons are there. So the King of Swords uh, makes sense. Um, so the next one is my next step in actioning that purpose. So my next step in actioning my personal purpose. I'm an over shuffler, but what are you gonna do? My next step in actioning my personal purpose. What I like about these spreads is that I like action items and spreads. I like there to be, okay, now I know this thing, what do I do with it? Um, because I think one of the things that sometimes readings fail in is that we don't have a way to measure our progress. And when we have an action step, it allows us to go back and say, oh, have I done this? No? Okay, well, I'm not doing my homework. Oops. I don't read. That was the moon, but I don't read pop-ups because I'm just a bad shuffler in a lot of ways. All right, the next step in actioning that purpose. The Five of Cups. That's really fascinating. So if we look at the Five of Cups from a numerological standpoint, um, fives are, to me, about disruption and shaking shit up. Uh, and sometimes that's a good thing, and sometimes it's a bad thing. Sometimes it's a disruptive force, sometimes it's a changing force. After the stability of four, the foundation four comes the, like, shaking up of five and um so five of cups i think suggests rattle <laughs> this is a nice sort of validation of the stuff i was talking about earlier it's shaking people's emotions up shaking up the stasis of how people feel um uh you know and and if you think about the rider Waite smith image of the card which this has some relationship to um there's loss in uh, in change, you know, we can't un we can't unknow what we've known. Once we've learned something, we can't unknow it. And I think that um, if you're gonna if you're gonna preach a message uh, that requires people to change their perception, um, there's gonna be a feeling of loss. And so that's it's you know so bad news for folks who don't like videos like this from me because this suggests that the next step is to keep talking about and keep shaking things up. All right, let's look now. The next one is my ancestral purpose. So this is why I chose the ancestral path deck. It's also a really beautiful deck in a lot of ways. I don't love, for some reason, the, the suit that I really don't love is the cups, which are like the Arthurian. I just don't really resonate with that. Maybe because it's an English myth and my ancestry is French. All right, so my ancestral purpose. The hanged one. That's fascinating. This is the hanged man. Um, I think we're heading into 2019, which adds up to the hanged man. And I think this might be my card for next year, too, if I'm not mistaken. Um... The Hangman's a curious card for me uh, because I have a kind of old-fashioned way of reading it. I read it um, a lot to do with consequences. Um, and so I think, in a way, my ancestral purpose is to explore the idea of consequences, which I actually do a lot in my work. It's something, you know, as a, as a playwright, one of the things, and when I'm teaching, one of the things I tell my students is that stories are really uh, a collection of escalating consequences. People get wrapped up in plot. Uh, and plot isn't really the thing we go to see. We go to see choices being made and the consequence of those choices. And so I think we have to, you know, this sort of suggests to me a sense of, of considering the consequences. Um, but I also think 
of the more traditional Rider Waite Smith um, way of reading this, or the more spiritual way of reading this, is like turning things on their heads, turning the world upside down, um, which again involves consequences. You know, and so I think the ancestral purpose suggests, in essence, uh, a need to turn things around and to look at them from every angle and to endure the consequences of doing that. And uh, like I said, with the Five of Cups, it's not, you know, there are consequences for even doing the right thing, you know, or for doing the thing that you think is right. And I think that the Hanged Man uh, can reflect that. And I think um, this image in particular of sort of a, a, a is it a breach when a, a baby is born upside down, sort of upside down in the womb? Um, is interesting because the job is harder, you know, the birth is harder. Uh, and so it's not an easy path. Uh, you know, it's, it's a, it's a harder road, you know, the hanged man isn't, you know, a lot of depictions of the hanged man show the sort of ray of light. Um, but that's not an easy thing to do. And even, even where Waite and Smith, I think got that image from, I think if I remember correctly, has to do with some golden dawn, uh, sort of death and rebirth rituals. And I think the hanged man kind of reflects the the thing because of course the card that comes next is, is death. Um, so that's my ancestral purpose. How can I honor and respect my ancestral purpose is the next one. can I honor and respect my ancestral purpose? The Ten of Sacred Circles, which is the Ten of Pentacles. This is a really interesting one. It doesn't, like, the first three kind of, like, clicked immediately, and the Ten of Pentacles is interesting. Um, tens are, to me, about the completion of cycles and the beginning of the next cycles. Pentacles are in this deck, Sacred Circles have to do with responsibility to me and responsibility uh is kind of a uh, an umbrella term for what a lot of folks think about when they think of pentacles so money family you know the banal the daily uh and so to honor and let's i just want to make sure i get the right language here um how can I respond, honor and respect my ancestor purpose? It's to bring, I think, responsibilities, the responsibilities that I have to completion, to sort of do the work that, that gets to the cycle, um, to honor my responsibilities. And, uh, you know, I think, I think there's sometimes we choose certain debt. I mean, I went through a lot of decks before I settled on this one. I said, what am I going to use? And I have some new decks I want to work with. And then I pulled down the uh, Heart and Hand deck, which is a deck that I bought and never really used. And, have won you know, I've been trying to, like, reconnect with things that I've had on my shelves. But I chose this one. Um, and so Sacred Circles isn't, in, you know, it's not Pentacles, it's Sacred Circles. And I think there's a sense of honoring um, this particular path. And uh, one thing that's come up in my family a lot is, you know, my great you know, my grandfather, my great grandmother, um, and my grandfather uh, were both Native American. My grandmother was Native American or First Nations. The my grandfather was half, uh, half uh, obviously, and he did not ever talk about it. And and she even apparently I heard this week uh, at Christmas that she she would always sort of obfuscate when asked. Um, and there was this shame. Uh, in there and uh, I think for me lately it's been sort of what's the like how do you get back to what was lost in the denial of that that's been an interesting thing for me too I, it's it's also interesting because I'm a, a, a white person you know who, who uh, I'm looking back at ancestors that I never met because I never met my grandfather and, and his mother um, and it's interesting you know everyone sort of has this thing of like oh I'm Native American like most people in the Northeast who have French Canadian roots have Native American roots and a lot of folks who aren't, you know, so you don't want to appropriate your past, but you do want to explore what was lost in the denial of, of one's heritage. And that's an interesting thing to me. Um, my collective purpose. So this to me is sort of within the community. And in this case, uh, I'll sort of refine it to this community. Community is a loaded word. I think we learned this year. Um, 
because communities are made of individuals and individuals are human and humans are complicated and we don't always make the right choice and we don't always say the right thing um and it's an interesting thing i think it's important to both recognize again consequences the consequences of the choices we make and also our own humanity and the fact that we're going to fuck up sometimes um and we need forgiveness um for that and sometimes we need to ask for forgiveness for that and it's just an interesting thing to be a human and to be alive right now ever so my role my collective purpose in this community what do we have the prince of staves so this would be the knight of wands and that's really interesting i think the prince of staves um is an igniter is someone who ignites people's enthusiasm and he's going out and looking for enthusiasm too and so i guess my role i would say within the community is to play that role of getting people excited about things which i think you know is something i try to do in, in my videos and um to get people excited about tarot and reading and what they do and i'm always looking for the thing that's going to excite me too so that seems to make sense um so how do i do that and that's so my next step in actioning that purpose more walkthrough videos. I actually keep vowing I'm not going to do walkthrough videos. And I kind of enjoy making them. And then they get requested or whatnot. I don't, it's not that I don't like them. And I enjoy doing them. I just, like, I worry about, like, contributing to people's debt. All right. So, again, six is my next step in actioning my collective purpose. My next step. My next step. The Ace of Sacred Circles. That's a cool one. So this would be the Ace of Pentacles. Um, it's funny. I think, I think I would say that this, you know, excitement isn't necessarily about the consumption of things. I think it's about returning to square one and returning to the basics and um, exploring our responsibility as readers, exploring our, um, our, our daily existence as a reader. And so I think the Ace of Swords, uh, the Ace of Coins here, or the Ace of um, Sacred Circles, <clears throat> sorry, my eyes are super itchy all of a sudden, um, suggests uh, going back to basics, going back to the start, going back to saying, like, what is tarot for? And it's interesting because I just started working on an essay for my book that will probably be the last essay in the book on what tarot is for and so maybe it's about like what what are our responsibilities as readers what are our responsibilities as consumers because i think that as tarot readers we are consumers both of um products and services and actually queen osette in in one of the videos from the past few days talks about um what i call thoughtful consumerism uh supporting artists and creators and readers and makers who whose values align with yours who are um uh, you know who are uh, doing the, the work that you believe in and so i think finding exploring ways to kind of go back to square one and explore our responsibilities is what that suggests and then sorry i just need to get back to the fifth uh, i'm sorry the seventh one how can i best build and develop my community Can I best build and develop my community? <laughs> the star. I'm laughing because Queen Osset had this card come up several times for her. And I said, you're absolutely a star um, for us. Because uh, to me, this card has to do with, um, in essence, sort of the way the Lenormand card to me uh, reads, which is, it's a guidepost. It's a light. It's a GPS. It's a direction. Um, and uh, the star to me does that. The star is the GPS, the guiding light, the thing that's saying to the, you know, the Magi or to the ship, you know, follow, follow this way, lead, you know, follow, follow this way. I think the star also, in a sense, can lead by example, you know, and, uh, and sort of set the tone, again, as a sense of direction. So um, 
you know, I, it sounds a little smug to say that I wouldn't say that if it weren't in the card, but I think, you know, it's a reminder, not that I lead by example, but that I need to remember that that's part of doing, you know, if you, if you make yourself a presence and you have any kind of audience, you have to be aware of the example that you're setting. Um, you know, I have a bad habit, for example, of when I have someone leaving a nasty comment on YouTube, which I did it today, someone leaving a nasty comment on a YouTube video, I leave an equally snarky one back and then post both on Instagram to make fun of and shame the troll <laughs> that's necessarily not necessarily leading by example um but i think helping people find direction is is something that i can do because i am by nature an educator it's my it's my day job i work in corporate learning i've talked about this before i talk about it in tower on earth um one of the reasons i started this channel was because i wanted to help people i wanted to give people what i wanted when i was starting out i like if you go back to my earliest videos they're all they're all sample readings because I wanted to show people um, how I read, and I wanted to give people a sense of what um, what it feels like to to do a reading live, and to have the card, you know, to interpret the cards and then pull the meanings together. And you know, the ironic thing is, I'm talking about this the thing that the person said to me that was was how what a shitty reading it was, and why anyone would do a reading for a dead murderer is beyond them well the purpose was to do a reading and show how it was just an example anyway so that's my spread i love these spreads that veronica rose came up with for uh queen of sets kwanzaa seven days sets of videos please check them out the spreads are great if you don't have time to watch the videos make time because she's awesome and you need to watch them and the information and the knowledge and the generosity of spirit that comes through is is just going to be a balm for you. The, just just watch it. But if you don't have time to do it right now, you can follow her as Oya's Girl on Instagram. Um, again, O Y A S G I R L. All of the spreads so far are there. I'm gonna rub my eyes for a second. <clears throat> And so thank you to her for the invitation to participate uh, and to uh, her and Veronica Rose for these great, amazing spreads. These are things I will probably return to for my own journey in the year ahead. So thanks for staying with me. This was a long video. How far are we now? 40 minutes. Yeah, this is typical me, right? I hope that you made it through this video. I think if you did, pat yourself on the back because I definitely address some things people don't want to talk about. Um, and I think if you're you're with me still, then you're at a place where you're willing to listen to stuff that's hard to talk about. Uh, please check out the books I recommended. Uh, I think I think we have a responsibility to engage these things. Um, and, you know, and I'm focused particularly in 2018 on race, but you know, it could be trans people that you want to you know explore their experiences the thing that i would say as a final note to that is it's not the job of a person who is being marginalized by our systems to teach you so what you don't want to do is go to your friends who are people of color or your friends who are trans or your friends who are queer and ask them to teach you if they want to and they open that door for you then take advantage of it but there are writers and bloggers um, and folks who have done that work and put it down on paper. It's our job as those who benefit from a system that harms others to do our homework. And um, that's key. So don't make it someone else's problem to teach you. The resources are out there. If you want to go and find them, go and find them, you know. And then when you receive feedback on them, uh, you know, accept it. Listen. I mean, it's about listening. We're going to get defensive. You know, what? one of the things Robin D'Angelo talks about in her book is sometimes we're going to fuck up. And if we're lucky, someone will tell us we fucked up. And when that happens, you don't get defensive and, and explain why. Listen and live with it. Thank that person for the generosity of telling you you fucked up. Because, again, folks who live with the impact of these systems in a negative way have to live with them you know who wants to live with that and educate too so anyone who's willing to do that is taking on an additional responsibility and coming at you from a real generous place um and i guess the final thing i would say about it is if you don't like the way they said it too bad they gave you that gift. If you don't like the tone of it, if you don't like the words of it, if you don't like the message, 
live with it, sit with it, engage with it, say thank you. If you don't understand and they're willing to engage, ask, help me understand this. You know, if they don't want to, go do your homework. That's what we have to do. Um, we all have to do our homework if we want to understand each other. So that's my thoughts uh, here at the end of 2018. I'm looking forward to 2019. It's weird. It's just an arbitrary marker of time. Nothing really changes. But, you know, in a way, it's it's just an opportunity. It's a milestone for us to reassess. So that's where I'm at. I hope everyone has a great New Year's and that 2019 starts off amazing for everyone. And I hope you're well and be good. And we'll talk soon.